Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to use the quilting rulers on the 11,000. Now there's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, you must have a ruler foot to do ruler work. And that's very important. The ruler is much thicker than a normal ruler that you might use for cutting fabric. So when you place the ruler foot against the ruler, it's wide enough to not jump over the top of the ruler and crunch your needles. So you must check with your dealer and make sure you've got the correct foot. Now on this machine, the 11,000, the foot here has, once it's attached, it has a wheel on the right hand side here with a spring. And you wind the wheel up or down to adjust the height of the foot. So you either go clockwise or anti-clockwise. The other thing that I find to be very helpful is a super slider. Now this is a super slider from America. Uh, we're in Australia here. It's from www.freemotionslider.com. You can go there or if you choose to use any of these applique mats or baking trays you can cut yourself a hole and put this under now what this you would need to cut a hole here so you're not stitching this to the back of your quilt of course and you would need to sticky tape this down to your table now what these do is they're super slippy so that when you take your work and your fabric and you need to move it around they move much easier than they do just on the table. So I like to use this super slider. Now this one, as far as I can remember, does come in two sizes. So there is a large one and a small one. The hole is already cut out for you and you place the hole just over where your thread is coming out and your needle is going down. So your bobbin thread needs to come up to the top. And this is um, some kind of rubbery silicone type of material and it just sticks to the bed here okay now you need to be on a straight stitch if you're on 11,000 and you need to drop your feed dogs it's also a good idea to have your needle in the down position I like to have my speed on a medium speed so we've got one arrow then two and I'm on the first arrow on the two. So you just need to find your own pace. And the trick with this is practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the better it gets. The easier it gets. So I'm just going to put those out of the way. Now I have a piece of fabric here and some batting. And this is how you practice. You cut yourself some squares. They could be on calico, on 12 inch squares, 15 inch squares, and just play. Now, if I pop my fabric under here, I should be able to move it freely without the foot dragging on the fabric. So if your foot is too low, you can turn the wheel clockwise is that right? No, clockwise is. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I can't tell which way it's going. Okay, clockwise is bringing the foot up. So if your batting is thicker than this and you've got more thickness under there, just raise that foot up and just raise it so that you can move your work around like that and have it not get caught. So once you've set your pace, I'm just going to start in a corner. The other thing is your thread should be the same weight top and bottom. So you can use quilting thread. If you have 50 weight on top, you should have 50 weight on your bobbin. Bring that bobbin thread up to the top. Needle up, needle down and then put that down and needle down. Now do not try to lift your foot with this 
foot attached to your machine. Don't try and lift it with your needle down because there's not enough space here to do that, okay? Just be aware of that and be careful. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my ruler and place it to the edge of the foot. I'm going, I am using my foot pedal so I've set my speed on a medium speed and I'm just going to stitch and push my work as I go. Now usually you do a couple of stitches on the spot to get started and then away you go. Now I am pushing the ruler, okay? I'm not fighting with it, I'm just pushing it. When you get down, the needle stopping down, just move your ruler to the next position and go again. Now if you want to go sideways, you can place the ruler to the back or to the front and go sideways. Now this is very much like doing free motion work. If you move your work too fast, you'll have long stitches. If you move your work too slow, you'll have tiny stitches. So this is a learning curve as in doing free motion stippling is you need to set your own pace. Whatever pace works for you. You've got the grid lines on here, so I'm just going to put my hand here and push. If I want to go at an angle, I can turn it this way. Stop, always stop with your needle down. And go sideways, okay? And just have a bit of fun with it, you know, don't... Um, Oops, I think my, my thread broke. Now if you want to join um, another piece of fabric here while you're playing, if you've run out of space, you can take your piece of fabric and the distance from the needle to the edge of the foot is a quarter inch. So if I take the ruler and place it to the edge of the fabric, and butt the foot up against the ruler. I can stitch down here and get a quarter inch seam. And I've wandered off. That's okay, keep going. Now, if I just take that out of the way and get out of the way, I can now push that fabric across and it's now been stitched onto the other fabric. So I could lift my needle, bring that foot up and start again. Now with these rulers, this jigsaw puzzle piece comes out and you can put another piece in. Oh, I've got this upside down, that would help, there we go. So your ruler should be facing you so that you can read what's on there to be the right way. Now we could place our circle on, use one of the lines to place the seam line on one of these lines and we can do some clam shells. I kind of need to do it this way I think. So if I just pop my foot down here I'll just do a couple of stitches to hold things in place and then you can place it on any of these lines. Any one you like. I'm going to maybe pick the middle one and then I'm just going to stitch all the way around and stop where I meet the fabric. Then I'm just going to move it to the next one and do the same thing again. Okay, so this is a really great easy way to do a border.
there you go and just move it to the next one there you go and keep on going to the next one and then you'll see how you create this nice pattern along so I hope you have fun practice 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 the only way to feel good about doing this is to keep practicing so get yourself some calico some squares have fun see you next time